Well, what are we doing? Sitting inside the studio on a rather windy, cold day, instead of out on a roof uh, with some panels trying to work out what the clamp zones are. Yeah. Because yeah, we're wimps. We're, 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 we're going to do this indoors. <laughs> yes. now, now, the purpose of this uh, kind of discussion, really, uh, Chun, is, is for me to better understand clamp zones. Yes. And uh, REC um, have an installation manual, which is... Um, it covers a range of different configuration options for the panels, you know, portrait, landscape, where the rails sit, et cetera. Yeah. And I was a little confused on how we understood um, where the clamp zone actually was. Yes. So you brought along this high-tech panel here from REC. Uh, yeah, one of its kind. I think the only one that's, that's made in <laughs> REC. So this um, is C-type. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's C-type. It's it's the latest of its field. You know, you can never go wrong. It's widely available at any time. Biodegradable in water even. Exactly. <laughs> exactly right. Not really good for rainy conditions, but hey, you know, you, you take and, some. And you brought a roof along for us. Oh, yes. Yep. That roof, um, again, one of its kind, um, state of the art. You know, there is buildings made of cardboard. After the Christchurch earthquakes, they actually built a church out of cardboard. Oh, yeah, um, I remember that, yeah. Engineered cardboard, that is. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, they didn't have cardboard solar panels, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. Maybe it's, 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 it's a beginning so, or something. Where do we start with this? All right, so let's start with talking about clearance gaps. Mm -hmm. I think that's the first thing a lot of people ask when they look at our installation manual. Um, there's a lot of information that goes on in there. And one of the biggest things is clearance gaps, which is why we have this house here. All right. Uh, yeah. So I'm just going to kind of move this over here so we can kind of see it. So basically what's going to happen here is that the clearance gap is the gap between the, high, the highest point of your um, installation surface, which in this case, if it's a roof, it's the, the roof and to the lowest point of the panel, which in this case is the underside of the panel. Oh, you're not talking about the apex of the roof or the gutter of the roof, but just the, the fact that the, the surface of the roof, you've got corrugations, yeah. it's the top of the corrugations. The top of the corrugations, yes. It's the highest point of that surface. Highest point of that surface. And the lowest point of the panel is the back of the panel. Exactly right. So if you want to have more, um, I guess, a, a more written out information, in the installation manual as well, before yeah. you head on to the clamping zones and the, the pascals and everything like that, the first page of it actually kind of describes the clamping zone and where the the limits are. And so you can just kind of refer to that if you ever forget where the, or what the clearance gaps is. So uh -huh. for, for conventional, like this roof you've got here yes. uh, with rails, you're going to get about, what, 100 and something mils of clear, of clearance. Yeah. Uh, probably in that sort of zone. That uh, about thereabouts, again, it really depends on what they use. Yeah. Um, and, and again, because our installation manual is across the world, so there are different installation standards in like say the US or in Europe, which is why we have different clearance gaps. But in Australia, I think, yeah, most of the, the installations are about 60 mil minimum. Yeah. So you already be in that column anyway. Right, gotcha. Yeah. So I'm going to bring this across. So that's the clearance gap there. And that's the first thing. I just want to clarify that out with um, anyone that's watching this um, about the clearance gap. Next up, we're going to go into what I guess we're kind of here for, which is the clamping zones. Okay, so clamping zones wise, for the Alpha Pure R panel in particular, we can start anywhere from 90 all the way down to 730. So 90 from the sh short side. 90 from the short side, yes. Yep. Um, attached so, so along the long. 90 from the short side millimeters yes. is as close as you can get to the short side. Yes. Okay. And the reason is just because of this. So I actually also went to put in these holes, as you can see in the corner, right? So these holes is what we call the drainage holes. And the main reason why we don't say it's the hole zero to 730 is because if you're gonna clamp here and then your panel gets clogged up with water, that's gonna be a problem. Right. So that's why we don't recommend anywhere from zero to 90, it's more that to not block up the drainage holes. Ah, oh, I never realized. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So that's, that's the main reason why for the Alpha PR panel it's from 90 onwards, yep. it's just so you don't block that, yep. that drainage hole. So that's the first thing. Um, second of all is, if you look at our table, at our installation manual, the clamping zones table, yep. there's a lot that goes in there. And I know it's a lot to take in because there's a lot of numbers that, that happens there. So first of all, what you want to do is get your um, wind loading of the particular area that you're going to install. And then from there, you refer to the table and where you want the installation to go, um, which and uh, what the, the distance is. And then from there, if you see if it correlates to the wind loading at your area, and then that's fine. And you can just kind of clamp it as the pegs are 
to simulate clamps. I'm sorry for all your um, clamping manufacturers, but this is the best I can do <laughs> at this point. Um, <laughs> we just borrow these from the neighbors washing. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell them I stole them. Um, but anyway, yeah. So you can clamp them anywhere from 9 to 7.30, depending on where the site is and what your wind loading calculations are. Okay, can you show me the most ridiculous extreme combinations of clamp zones then that you could do? Okay, so I can actually do that. So I'm gonna show you right now. So I'm just gonna imagine these two are the railings yes. of the, the site, okay? So you can actually clamp them all the way past the support bar. So by the way, I'm just gonna take this out really quickly. Yep. Okay, I'm gonna flip this over. And you can see there is the support bars at the back. Um, Let's not talk about the condition of them, but they are there. All right. So There's double support bars on the, the, the PRs. Exactly. Two support bars at the yeah, back, right. which we'll, we'll kind of get into it later. But the most extreme that, you know, you can actually get to is you can actually climb past the support bars. Wow. You can actually go past them and that is still within range. Um, don't mind the 730. It's not drawn to scale. So those, those blue pegs represent where two rails would be. Uh, where your clamps would be. The clamps would be? Yes. Yes, so, but the rail's going to be underneath. Yes. Um, yeah. So I think the insta... Oh, sorry, that's the rails. You're right. You're right. That's where the rails are supposed to go. Then Where the, the pegs are. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. Instead of that, we'll... Hang on. Just can you leave them there? That is insane to me how close you can go. Like, yeah. Uh, I mean, oh, I can just shift the railing up. Let's there. just put the rails yeah. here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this is just as fun as Lego. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that is actually a legitimate mounting. Now, people would describe that as a surfboard or what do you call it, a diving board. Diving you, board. You've got yes. all this flex. But yeah. why is that not a problem? Okay. So we're going to move on to why the support bars are so important to us. Yes. Right. A lot of people have been asking can we remove the support bars? Why is it there? Et cetera. And that's just really because we want to enable installations like that. Um, installations where your railings are close together or people let's call it like the diving board. Mm -hmm. um, and that's because the support bars kind of assist in the flexion of the panel in itself. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to show you really quickly um, why it kind of does help by removing all of these. Okay. And I'm going to bring this up. So when you get loading either on the top or at the bottom, your panel kind of flex. I don't know if you can kind of see this. It's not a lot, yeah. but because it's cardboard, it's going to flex, right? Yeah. So if you don't have the support bars, which I'm going to remove really quickly here. Boop. Boop. I'm loving this uh, C-type panel. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it does everything. It's so lightweight. It yeah, <laughs> it's modifiable as well. So, so without, the, without any support bars at the back, yes. right, your inflection from the front and the back will be very, very... Um, thin or it, it, it's significant yeah there is no support at all yeah right so the flexion happens there and so therefore recommendations will not go as close to where alpha prs can be but because of the support bar so we're going to reattach this um, if everyone wants to see how to do it you you do this here and you do this here very very useful and then from there because of the support bars and it's holding the frame as well when you get your flex, it doesn't flex as much. Yeah, and right. so it does help in the support of, of that, either on your snow loading or in your wind loading. Yes. It doesn't, it doesn't cause as much flexion because of these support bars. And that enables us to have an installation where the rails are across. So Chun, this has been yes. a lot of fun. Um, I think you like craft. I, I do, I do. It, it's a it's a past hobby of mine. The, the child never left me. <laughs> it seems <laughs> there's actually someone I won't say who it is who's well known in the uh, inverter business in Australia, and she's very into dolls' houses and oh, really? making all the furniture for them. <laughs> oh wow! And, okay. and the tiny, beautifully made pieces of furniture. That's actually really amazing. I'm <laughs> yeah, not gonna yeah. lie. Yeah. <laughs> now, um, one of the things we didn't cover was how did you come up with the kilopascal uh, loading, you know, for for wind? Where do you find that out okay so also. how how we usually find that out is um and i think you know um, ivan with Clenergy might have told you this as well a lot of multi-manufacturers will be more inclined towards that um how we usually do how i usually do it is i use the internet and i put it into a calculator and it does the calculations for me so cheat <laughs> is that it's, publicly available it is actually um so the website that i use is skysiv 
Yep. Um, link in the description. Yeah, <laughs> it it is free as um as I'm as of now actually. I'm not sure how it would be in the future, but um, I use that to kind of calculate any ad hoc um wind loading um calculations that I need to do, and it just kind of gives me a rough gauge of that area and what the pascals are um that we have to look at. Now, in terms of that as well, I do get because we have so much on our table, on our clamping zone table, that people get confused on what to use or what to look out for. And I would say, as long as the calculations are within that range and the houses are within the same expected input, then you can roughly, it'll roughly be the same um, in that area. And you don't have to worry too much. If you're going from neighbor to neighbor, that wouldn't be a problem. But again, to give you an extremity, if say you have a house and your next door neighbor is a skyscraper in the middle of, you know, nowhere, then you might have a different wind loading that you might need to calculate on. But if everyone's on the same, same house, you know, single story, maybe some one and a half stories, more or less, it's going to be the same. And you can just kind of use that table to see what you need and what you can do on that side. A big admission here. I used to think it was as simple as just looking at the table in the back of 5033, which um, the wind load uh, in 1170.2, okay. sorry, yep. which just showed you the wind zones. Yep. Uh, and think, oh, we're in wind zone or, or ABC, whatever. Yeah. Uh, and that was it. But actually, it's a much more um, subtle than that, isn't it? That, that's sort of like your course calculation, and then you've got to localize that. Yes, exactly right. So there's a lot that goes into the formula in itself, um, mm. which is why, um, again, I'm not an expert in it, and therefore I use something that an expert has developed, which is the, the SkySift calculator. Yeah. Um, but if you need an exact value, you can always just ask an engineer out there to do the calculations for you. It's yep. not a problem. Uh, shout out to Ivan from Cleanity for showing us how to do it using uh, their own software. So uh, uh, his personal home phone number in the description. <laughs> no, not really. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, it's sometimes you do have to call for help. If it's like one of those skyscrapers in the middle of nowhere next to your house, uh, you probably do need a bit more engineering. But yeah. Just, uh, um, yeah, I reckon it's good. Yeah, <laughs> exactly right. Yeah. <laughs> well, Chun, thanks for um, the craft. I, I really, uh, I think it's a great way of explaining it. I, I definitely feel more confident. And, uh, you know, I know now that I can do some silly things like this, <laughs> um, which seems incra and crazy, or uh, like this, which is the, uh, the diving board, because of the struts. Exactly right. And we're only talking um, alpha- uh, Alpha pure, <laughs> pure R, right? Yes. Just don't uh, assume that any panel you can do that because every panel's engineered based on its materials and yes. and its strength and its module strength. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Well, um, I think it's uh, time to wrap it up. Uh, uh, thank, well, thanks for having me. <laughs> thanks for entertaining my my little craftsmanship here. I know it's not the best, but <laughs> it's the first prototype. You know, in the future you might see this on a roof somewhere. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good one. Thank All right. you. See you, John. Thank you. Cool. <laughs>